Hello, I'm Sally Duggan. I'm the editor on New Zealand House and Garden magazine. I'm here today to say thank you for helping us out, volunteering to help us out with the New Zealand House and Garden house tours. Also want to just give you a little bit of an idea of what happens behind the scenes with the tours and what we need you to help us with. I've been doing the tours now for five years. They're a really fun day out, a really good picnic atmosphere. My job is to find the houses for the tours. As you can imagine, talking people into opening their homes for the house tours can be a bit tricky sometimes. There's a lot of persuasion involved. But what usually gets people over the line is two things. First of all, it's for a great cause. So all the funds, go, all the proceeds from the tour go to the New Zealand Breast Cancer Foundation, are invested locally. The other thing that gets them across the line is my assurance that their house will be really well looked after by our team of volunteers on the day. And of course, that's where you come in. Every house on the tour has a team of volunteers. The team can be from two people up to about 10 people in our bigger houses. There'll also be one supervisor allocated to each house. As a volunteer, there's a number of important things that you need to do to help us on the day. The first one is to turn up on time. So you'll be told which house on the tour and what address to turn up to, and you need to get there at 9.30. The doors to the tour open at 10, so this just gives you half an hour of organisation time before people start arriving. We'll give you a house and garden apron to wear over your clothes on the day. We are thinking if you wore something simple and white underneath, perhaps a white t-shirt or a white shirt, that would look fantastic. Importantly, one of the rules of the house tours is that you, there are no shoes to be worn inside the house. So be aware of that, you won't be able to wear shoes either. So be aware of if you want to, if you're more comfortable, you might leave, like to have socks on, but have shoes that are easy to get in and out of. When you've arrived and you've got your apron on, it's a good idea to look for the information sheet on the house. Now we have three or four of these laminated sheets, they'll look something like this, lying around in every house. They give us just a little bit of colourful detail about the house and its owner. And it's a good idea if you can read that beforehand. And then as the people arrive during the day, you'll be able to chat to them a little bit about the history of the house, who lives there, how they use it, what notable features or art there is to look for, etc. We also need you to enforce the house tour rules. We keep these to a minimum, but they are really important. So first of all, there's no touching. So you're not to go into cupboards. Nobody's to go into cupboards or to open closets or to open drawers or anything like that. Very few people will try this, but it's worth keeping an eye out for. The other thing is worth watching for are people with big handbags because it's very easy for someone with a big handbag over their shoulder to turn around and knock treasures off a mantelpiece. So just keep an eye out for that. The other important thing is no photos. So this one's quite hard to enforce because a lot of people of course these days have mobile phones and can take quick sneaky pictures. But we do promise the homeowners that there will be no photos taken. So if you see that happening, do remind them of that. There's no babies or kids allowed on the tours. So the rule is no one under 16. There shouldn't be anybody that obviously falls into that category because we've stopped them at the ticket buying stage. But if you see anyone like that, you will need to talk to them about it. The other thing is no food. So nobody's to be eating in the house for obvious reasons. As a volunteer, we ask you to work half a day. So if you'll get there at around about 9.30 and you'll work till about 12.50 when the next shift will come and take over. If you're allocated the second shift, we need to get you, you need to get there around about 12.50 and do the same sort of things that I've just explained for the morning shift. Before you leave, your, if you're on the morning shift, before you leave, if you can just check out with the supervisor, let them know you're leaving, and this is important, take off your apron and hand it to the next volunteer. If you're on the second shift, you need to take off your apron and hand it back to the supervisor, who'll return it to us for the other tours. What I've explained to you are the responsibilities of the volunteers. If you're the supervisor of a house, you've got a few extra responsibilities. Most importantly, you're the guardian of the relationship with the homeowner. And these homeowners, of course, are, are key to the tours. They're very, very important. We're hoping to meet with all the supervisors the night before the tours and at that point you'll pick up flags and bags and all that sort of paraphernalia which Steffi's going to talk to you more about in a minute. 
We'd also like you to ring the homeowner the day before the tours and introduce yourself and just soothe their nerves, let them know that you're on the case and you'll be there tomorrow. Now I'm going to hand you over to tour manager Steffi Jastra who will take you through the nuts and bolts of what it involves to be a supervisor. First things first, tour supervisors will need to be there approximately 9am on the morning of the tour. You have hopefully already met with me the night before and received all your goodies. So this includes any signage, any um, goodie bags and things like that and any other things that we need you to take to the houses on the day. You also will have called the, the house owner the day before and so they will be expecting you at 9am and ready to start the day. The first thing to do when you arrive at the house is to meet up with the homeowners and go through any needs with them that they may have been worried about. Once you've done that, you start, ready, start getting the house ready for the tour to the day. First thing is signage. Fortunately, our house and garden house tour signage isn't here yet, so we've had to pull in some other substitutes for the day. You'll have some flags, which will eventually look like this. These are the outside flags that need to be outside on the house. So I'm just gonna show you how to put one of these up. So they'll eventually look like this, and they'll have stakes in the ground to put them in the ground. So you will receive a pack that will look a little bit like this. They'll just be black long packs. That's what those flags originally come in. Inside, they'll have a range of sticks like this that you put together similar to tent pegs and things like that. Once you've sorted the outdoor signage, you may want to put some in, in, in the indoor. They're not super, super important, but you might like to use them just to correct any flow or if the house owner has just specified they just need something in particular. So these include things like exits, arrows or no entry, um, which we'll cover off shortly. These will be in the house kits um, and they're just going to be provided with some blue tacks so you can just stick them on doors as you need. These are your house kits. Each house will be provided with one, which will arrive with the supervisor on the morning. In your house kit, there is a few different items. First thing, there'll be these information sheets, which Sally mentioned earlier, about the house. These will also be laminated and need to be just put around the house on the day. Secondly, there'll be the signs that we just mentioned. There will also be other items. So firstly there'll be um, blue tack, there'll be some pens and paper if you need it, especially for the registration process. And also there'll be some ribbon, maybe not be this colour but something similar. This is really important, this ribbon. When the supervisor gets to the house on the morning, they will need to discuss with the homeowner any areas of concern. This could be a private bathroom or a gym or a study that the homeowner is just not sure about letting people into. Obviously we want to get the home, like the homeowners to open up their house as much as possible so people can really see it. But there might be a few little rooms that might just need a little bit of ribboning off. That means that the ribbon will just be blue tacked to the sides of the door just so people can still see into the room without it, people going in there if the homeowner is concerned about privacy. Okay, now we've come to a really important part, the ticketing process. First things first, we, I know Sally mentioned it earlier, but we must make sure that no babies or small children or animals are going into the homes on the day. This means that if someone does arrive with a baby or a small child, the homeowner, we have told them that they're not coming in, so they have to stand outside with them and make sure that they're not going into the house. This could mean a friend or a family member just has to stay outside with them during this time. Secondly, the ticket holders must carry their official ticket with them. This is it just here. We'll send you a copy as well. The ticket, official ticket has their registration number and their name on it. Basically, they'll arrive with their ticket and their ID and they will be checked off a large spreadsheet like this, which you will have and it'll be easy to find. Once you've found the ticket holder's name, cross them off the list and give them one of these wristbands. They're rubber and they've got the New Zealand House and Garden logo on them. This means that it's effectively a ticket for the rest of the day. People only need to register at the first home that they go to. Each ticket holder will be provided with a starting house. And then once they have one of these, they're free to go through the houses throughout the day. It's a really important idea 
that when pe ticket holders start to line up early in the day, that we can get them into the houses as soon as possible. This may mean, as they're lining up at the start of the day, we can get someone going down the line, ticking people off and giving them their wristbands, just to avoid a bit of backlog. Once the ticket holder has received their ticket for the day, their wristband, you'll also hand them two bags. One will be a black bag, a little bit like this, it will be a resine goodie bag. It will be full of all sorts of pamphlets and goodies, so you may like to suggest to them to have a look through it for the rest of the weekend. Also they'll receive one of these, something similar, a Wallace cotton shoe bag. You could also suggest to them that they may like to put their shoes in this when they're walking around for the rest of the tours. All the ticket holders should be on that spreadsheet provided. If for whatever reason they're not, make sure you check their ID and the spreadsheet very carefully. If there's any problems at all, please contact me. My mobile number should be provided for you at all times. As a supervisor, you need to keep hold of all material, including these aprons, which are very precious. During the changeover, please make sure that the volunteers are swapping aprons over from the first shift to the second. Likewise, when the second shift finishes, please make sure that they collect them back in as we do need them for the other tours. And finally, the last people through the houses should be about 3.50. As they walk in, please let them know they only have approximately 10 minutes to walk through the home before the home's shut for the day. This is an also important time for pack up for the supervisor. The homeowner should start to arrive at probably 3.50, 4 o'clock. This is a good time to pack up all the signage, any other additional things that may have been used throughout the house, tidy it up and just make sure that the homeowner is happy with everything. The supervisor is also required to bring all of the things that they brought to the house in the morning, so that includes any leftover goodie bags, any signage, anything like that back to the meeting point where she should have picked things up from the day before. This needs to be back at about 5 to 6 o'clock depending on how long it takes to pack up and also the travel that needs to be required to get there. Other than that, I hope that this briefing video has helped you. I'll write out all the instructions so you also have them all written down and they should be in your inboxes shortly. Thank you. I've been to five years worth of these tours and I'm sure that you'll have a great day. They're a really fun day. We've got some fabulous houses lined up for you. So we'll look forward to seeing you out there. Steffi and I'll both be there on the tours and we'll look forward to a great day.